Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just maybe take one of the ultimate talk before our lunch session. So before that, I'd like to thank our uh, my mentor, Dr. Vajit Sabu sir, along with my dear colleagues, Dr. Rupal and Dr. Dharminder, to give me the opportunity. The topic seems to be very much uh, simple, the practical tips for monitoring and evaluations. So let's see, we all know that India is a uh, diabetic epidemic, nothing going into details, but the thing which is worsening us is about the, pre, the status of pre-diabetes. Nine out of 10 are pre-diabetic, but it doesn't know it's actually the fact. So think about situation like a diabetic and pre-diabetic going into pregnancy, they have diabetic variability. So what can this link to? Newborn injury, shoulder dystopia, microsomia, large for the age, neonatal uh, ICU care. I'm not going into the figures, I'm just saying about the complications. So how to prevent all this? To prevent, we know that the both is healthy living with diabetes and healthy pregnancy outcome. So the monitoring is the key. So for monitoring, <clears throat> what the definition says, if I go with the book's definition, it says that monitoring and evaluation, even though we combine it together, are the techniques we use to find out how well our health programs is achieving, what is set out to do. But monitoring and evaluation, they are to different terms. Monitoring is what we are doing on a daily basis. An evaluation, what is we are getting at the end of the program? For like pregnancy, the monitoring is day to day, SMBG, CGM, these are the uh, monitoring and evaluations how the pregnancy outcomes have been for us. So that is called monitoring and evaluations in uh, pregnancy. So the goal is to maintain uh, that glucose within the target. The immediate benefit will be it will keep us and maximize learning and participation from the pregnant woman. It will identification for treatment and prevention of lowest and highs for the uh, pregnant mother. The long-term benefit, the important is that the teachers from the hospital with healthy mother and healthy baby. So there are a few challenges. The technologies which we have as of now is SMBG or structured SMBG, uh, CGM or plus uh, glucose monitoring. So about talking about SMBG, why it's important because it gives us a glycemic uh, assess, uh, assessment along with it optimizes the therapy, which can lead to the behavioral change uh, through diabetic education and understanding for our patients. So the idea of recommendation for the use of SMBG, that's uh, it should be used at the time of diagnosis. It can be you consider the part of ongoing treatment for self-management diabetes educations. Uh, it can uh, it, it should be individuals according to the according to the uh, persons. So this is about not in, uh, non insulin treated diabetes, but the same consideration can be taken for pregnancy also. So what is structured SMBG? Structured SMBG is a methodological approach which enables the patient and clinician to understand. The blood glucose patterns throughout the day so that appropriate therapeutic adjustment can be made. Just doing an SMBG is uh, not a, a too much valuable good for us, but we have to make it in a very structured way. There are a few examples, like these are called, this is one of the called uh, five point SMBG, where we are doing it five points over three days period in the time. Next, if you look in our seven point, we can do the seven point SMBG either from one to three days to understand the pattern of fluctuations of the patients. This is about staggered SMBG. Staggered SMBG is that we try to do pre and post meal, every alternate, uh, once uh, every day, the but in a different part of like, suppose one you are doing in a breakfast, one for the lunch, one for the supper, this will keep on continuing till we can understand the actual, uh, actual pattern of this. And along with that, I would like to say the meal based testing. Meal based testing is important because only doing SMBG will not support us if we don't maintain the food diaries for our patients. So while we'll be looking into the SMBG reading, we also need to check out the food diaries of the patient. So this is what we know all about uh, the fasting, hyperglycemia, how to look about the SMBG, how to be done for the to, uh, control your fasting. And if you have to look about asymptomatic hypoglycemia, we have to check about pre-lunch and pre-supper, where there are chances of hypoglycemia a bit higher on in case of pregnant ladies. So these are the studies showing about the reduction of a one compared with the uh, SMBG and compared with the control. And this is about showing about the A1C changes. Uh, in the structured testing SMBG, if you look into the data, you can find it a dialogue from baseline to uh, six months. There is uh, in the group which have been with the routine testing group, they have been uh, a reduction which has been also significant also. So these are few studies, I'm not going into deals of the studies, summaries of SMBGs. So this is a lensing device because I was supposed to talk about the practical tips. These are lensing device. In lensing device, we find the cap, there's a release button, there's popping uh, control, that control is there which is very much important for our patients. And these are the different type of glucometers we have. Now, which is important. First of all, we have to gather all the supplies, then we have to wash our hand and dry it. And 
If we are willing to put this uh, blood filter in case of hepatitis B or HIV positive patients, we need to take care of that also. After that, we will get the meter ready and then we will uh, lens or we will uh, pick the finger, preferably the ring finger. I hope we all know about the reasons why we have to choose the ring finger, uh, the lateral aspect of the finger. And after that, there are a few blood glucose meters which we need to drop, but we don't need to smear the blood over the file. Uh, or there are a few meters which weak the blood into the uh, strips. And we'll get the results. So this is about, but the thing is that practical thing, how to get enough blood for testing. Because a lot of times the patient will come and say you, say you that I think my uh, either family member, parents or uh, husband or wife, they don't have blood because we're taking we didn't get enough blood. So the, the technique how to get is makes you, you are hydrated, wash your hand before, uh, wash your hand and warm with warm water, hang on, on your side for a few minutes before testing to help the blood flow. Apply your warm compression prior to testing, message. The hand prior to testing, apply pressure or to the finger before and using the lensing it. Don't test on the same finger each time, adjust the lensing depth along with that. So this is there is one more rule called milking thumb method. I'm not going into details, it's like almost similar. Only thing is that we have to uh, we have to use two fingers while uh, doing this. Almost we can see this slide like uh, there are three patients they have A1C almost similar but they do have glycemic variability. So what, how can you overcome that or how can you know address that? We can do it by through CGM. So how does it work? A tiny sensor which has been inserted just under the skin. After that system automatically record the average glucose for, uh, every 5 minutes from up to 3, 5, 7 or 14 days even. And it do have an alarm uh, to say about when the sugar is out of target. So uh, this. CGM can be of either blinded or unblinded, and it can, it can also have a uh, flash glucose monitoring. As of now, we are using many of flash glucose monitoring for our patients. But the thing is that the simple CGM initiation checklist, which is important, patient should be willing to use CGM. The patient should be educatedly, uh, educatedly ed uh, educated on the CGM and the management, and they should be understood the values and how what to do after the values. And patient does not need to undergo any MRI. CT scan, X-ray or high frequency electrical heat treatment while wearing the CGM machines. And this is about the RSPA recommendations. They are saying that CGM may be considered in women with CGM or with GDM or pregnant uh, women with type 2 TM as a supplemental tool to SMBG in the individuals with hypoglycemic unawareness and or frequently hypoglycemic episodes. So this is about the consistent statement that saying that any uh, Pregnant women with type 1 or type 2 DM or GDM, they should have more than 70% of time in range within 70 to 140. Uh, for type 2 diabetic patients, they must have more than 90% of time in range within 70 to 140. And as well as uh, CGM is also important for our pregnant lady because we know that the pregnancy state of uh, postprandial hyperglycemia. So while using CGM and the maintaining food diet, we can really uh, take about uh, adjustment with the food for our patients. And one more study was showing that if any patient who have time in range more than 80%, they uh, they have lower risk of infection post-surgery. Post-surgery, we can say like post, uh, pregnant lady, we have C-sections for that, yeah, they will have better outcome. We, we usually know that for uh, in pregnancy, uh, uh, diabetic patients, obvious diabetic patient, post-pregnancy, their chances of bone infection, secondary infection, that can be really reduced if you wish, if you wish uh, this uh, SMB, uh, CGM in our patients. The benefits for... Uh, uh, in case of post neonatal outcome, what they found that in any uh, patient who have timing range more than uh, seventy percent, they have uh, better pregnancy outcome uh, from uh, for our patient along with the neonatal care, which have been uh, taken from the concept study. They say that it has been reduced LGA, neonatal hypoglycemia, and neonatal ICU admission too. So besides this, we do have some other part also in call our uh, if. Someone cannot do uh, SMBG or uh, CGM, we do can also consider about checking uh, urinary glucose and also ketone bodies because type 1 diabetic patient along with pregnancy, they do sometimes uh, give us ketones in our blood and for important thing is that for ketones, the 30 percent of the pregnant women, they do give ketones in their morning sample. So if we are doing ketone test for our pregnant lady, then try to do it in the next sample after the morning sample. And hence, we need to uh, check about the blood ketones method also, uh, which are preferred for our patients. So there is one study called uh, the twin study, which they have been saying that uh, 
Uh, then in the chances of having uh, similar gene, but we know that for twin study, the type of uh, epigenetic changes can also require for that. And we know that uh, rising prevalence of uh, diabetes, uh, then GDM and all these things. But thing is that the epigenetics is been regulated by the environment. And the environment is like the food, lifestyle, and all these things. So monitoring can be a very special part to overcome these uh, changes. So the future coming is that about Minimally invasive, like glucobach is there, sugar bit and contact lenses, not going into the details. It's just clinic takeaway is that monitoring is essential. Proven data have shown that euglycemia or near euglycemia can improve quality of life. Same can be said in GDL, EGDL or diabetes and pregnancy. And all quote saying that half bread is better than no bread. And pick it, SMBG, CGM, whichever is possible, please use for your patient for the better pregnancy outcome.